Hey guys, Tristan Parker here and welcome back to another one of my videos. Today I'm keeping it really short and sweet, but nonetheless it's still going to be super beneficial. Today we are talking about the differences between pixels, rems and ems, which are all measurements found in website design. Now I was once confused by all of these measurements, so if that's you, then you're going to find this really beneficial and I recommend you stick around. Now in modern web design, there are quite a few different measurements that are available to us. We've got the rems, ems, pixels, view height, view width, percentage. Now I remember the days where there was just really percentage and there was just pixels. So there's quite a few different variations to get your head around. And today in this video, we're gonna be covering off the differences between pixels, ems, and rems, which are commonly found in website design and more commonly found within Elementor. So what we're going to do is that we're going to jump on the screen and I'm going to run you through a quick little presentation I've put together. And then we're going to jump into Elementor so I can show you firsthand what the differences between each of these are and what they look like when they're in action. Now, before we jump onto the screen, I just wanted to say that over 70% of you guys watching my content have not yet subscribed. So if that is you, please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification as well, and you're going to be notified of future releases. Also, there are loads of other videos on this channel which are designed to help you up your website design game and improve your business. So if that sounds great to you, then go and check that out as well. Now, without further ado, let's jump on the machine and get started. So we're going to be talking about pixels, ems or rems in this video. So first off, let's discuss pixels and you're probably well aware of what pixels are. But essentially, pixels are an absolute unit. They are fixed size and do not rely on the size of any other elements within the website. So what do I mean by this? Essentially, if you define 16 pixels, it's always going to be 16 pixels. Pixels are always going to be pixels. So it's an absolute element, nothing changes. This also goes for containers. So if for example, you had a window width of say 200 pixels, but you had a container of 100 pixels, that in a container is always going to be 100 pixels, unless you specify it otherwise. So now moving on to M's. M's are slightly different. They are a relative unit. Remember pixels were an absolute unit. M's are relative, means they change. So if for example, our parent element's font size is set at 16 pixels, that means that one M is 16 pixels. 2m would then be 2 times 16, so that would be the equivalent of 32 pixels. If you had half an m, then it would be 8 pixels because 8 is half of 16. Now, I need to stress here that this only applies to the parent element. So this is great for responsive sizing. For example, if your desktop is set at a body font of, let's say, 18 pixels, you might not want that size on a mobile. So you could then set the mobile size to be 16 pixels and all of the typography that have M's as the font size will change accordingly, making it really nice and easy for responsive design. So just to give you a little illustration of what I'm trying to say here, if you have a parent element that is set to 16 pixels, so this box here has a um, font size of 16 pixels, then the child element, if it is 1M, is going to be 16 pixels, and 2M is going to be 32 pixels. Now, if the parent element is then changed to 20 pixels, then 1M is going to equal to 20 pixels, and 2M is again, then going to be 40 pixels. So M measurements are relative to the parent element, okay? So now let's move on to REMS. So REMS are very similar to M's. They are also an absolute measurement. The only difference is it doesn't look at the parent element. It looks at the root element, so very top level. So if, for example, if you have your HTML or body font size set to 16 pixels, one REM is going to look at that and it will be 16 pixels. Also, two REM will be 32 pixels and vice versa. Very similar to M's. Now, where this differs is I have an example over on the right hand side. So here we have our typical parent element that has a font size of 18 pixels. So within inside here, we have a child element. And it has a font size of 1M and that is gonna equal 16 pixels. Now, you will now see that we have this root element that kind of encompasses all of the parent elements inside and that is set to 16 pixels. So that's slightly different to the sizing of the parent element. So what this does then is if you have a child element inside and you define the font size as rem, so here we've got two rem, then that's gonna be 32 pixels because that's two times 16, not two times 18. So if that was one rem, not m, but rem, then that would be 16 pixels. So what it does, it completely bypasses the parent element and it will go straight to the root. So when do you choose to use m's or rem's? Because they are pretty similar. But essentially, 
because M's are relative to the parent's element's font size, you'd use them if you want to scale an element size based on the parent. However, rems are relative to the root, as we've already discussed. So no matter the sizing of the parent, sizing will be based off the root size. So basically within your document object model or DOM, if you have lots of nested M's, then you might want to rely on a rem to sort of bypass all of the M's and just sort of reset that and go with your root font. So guys, that's the end of the presentation. I'm sure you loved it. But basically what I'm going to do now is going to flip over to Elementor and show you what this is like in real life, just to give you a little bit of context. So guys, you're probably thinking, awesome, Tristan, that's a great presentation, but how does this actually work in web design? So I'm just going to flip over to my agency website and we can take a look at how the pixels and M's differ within actual real life design. So let's go have a look. So here we've got my agency website in Elementor. So the first thing I want to do is click on the main title and I'm going to go to typography. So you'll see that this has a sizing of 6m okay the one above if i click digital marketing agency has a sizing of 0.82 rem and the font below has sizing of one rem so what that now does is it makes the text scalable and is very good for responsive design so if we head over to preview these changes so here we are on the front end this is how this page is looking you can see that the title is the same size as what we just defined it as 6m's now, if I go down to mobile, you'll see that this font reduces and it's still very readable. It's not staying at that huge size that we had defined on desktop. So you can see this is great for responsive design. Now, if I was to change this and define this as pixels, and let's say we set it at 100 pixels, and then if we go and view this in the browser now within our mobile mode, you can see that it's automatically updated and the font size is huge. So we lose that responsive text fluidity that we would get with M's. So what I'd recommend is that you use M's rather than pixels when defining font sizes. It will really help you in the long term with creating really nice responsive designs and making sure everything is consistent. So there you have it guys, I told you it would be really short and sweet. Hopefully you found that really useful because there was once a time where I had no idea what the difference between pixels, M's and REMs were. And for a long time I avoided using M's because I knew what pixels were. Now, hopefully you can start using M's or REMs in your website design and it's gonna save you a lot of time, a lot of headaches in the future when you are making websites responsive. Now I've shown you how to do this in Elementor, but you can also do this on any other web design program or just through pure HTML and CSS. So I am absolutely convinced that you're gonna find this beneficial. Now, before I go, please do hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification for future releases. I've got some really cool videos coming up and you don't wanna miss out on them. If you haven't done so, go check out the other videos as well. That's it for now guys, and I will see you in my next video.